Okay. All right, folks, so with the rise of uh, cases of social media influencers pursuing legal action for defamation and identity theft character, there's been increased interest in avenues through which people can protect their image online. And here to talk to us about that uh, partner at Duncox, uh, Jonathan Morgan. Good to see you again, my friend. Welcome. Thank Hi. you so much. Hope Pleasure all is well. Here. Ah, definitely. Delia made a, a point just now before we started that... Um, it's more anti-social media than social media. <laughs> it, it, it's it, just an overall statement, and this, this is my view. It's, 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 it's a rough space sometimes, isn't it, it? It can be, certainly. You have to be careful navigating the space and, you know, more importantly, managing your information. Yeah. Uh, because the bad actors in this space are ruthless, and yeah. they've shown themselves to have a lot of tools at their disposal for, for interfering with personal information of users. Yeah. When you say managing your information, explain that. Well, social media has become a platform for the publication of a lot of personal information. We share our names, our occupation, our date of birth, our, in some cases, our address, our place of work, pictures of our family members, pictures of our friends. It's the type of information that people can easily uh, gather and utilize against us. And that is what has caused, I think, an increase in the prevalence of identity theft on social media. And in some cases, it's been used to create defamatory material against some social media influencers. Mm. So yeah. the management of that information is very important, but it, it's overlooked in the pursuit of likes and comments, and some people call it social media fame. Yeah. Mm. Um, when we say identity theft, for, the, you know, for us and the viewers, define it a little bit more for me. No John. problem. Uh, identity theft is deliberately using someone's personal information for criminal intention. Mm -hmm. So it could be for the purpose of committing a fraud. It could be to infiltrate the person's financial resources, for example, impersonating them to get access to their bank accounts. Uh, we've seen in Jamaica an increased prevalence of using personal information to run scams. People are impersonating influencers, attorneys, prominent members of society, and pretending to sell real estate that mm. doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. So, our weight loss gummies <laughs> that, that, that don't exist either. But, but well, how you control that? Um, I remember there was a, a well, there have been many fake pages for me, and I don't have one. And our company here actually wrote Facebook, and they said. What they said makes sense and it makes sense because they said they couldn't take it down unless I proved that I had an authentic one. Yes. But I don't have an authentic one. So, so I can't prove that I had one. But I understand that because I guess I could write and tell them to take down yours because it's fake and it's really not fake. So how you get around that? Yes, that's right. Uh, well, there are a couple areas. For those who have verified accounts, accounts that have that blue check mark on social media platforms, they can establish that they are the owners of those accounts and they can write to have fake accounts removed. Uh, for many others, for us regular folk who right. we have standard social media accounts, the uh, obligation to have it removed is certainly one that cannot be exercised easily. It, it is a strenuous one because it requires you to establish that you are the authentic holder of your own account. But if you can establish that, if you're prepared to share your identity information with the social media platform, they have been seen to remove the, the imposter's profiles. And it also helps if they get a number of reports from friends and associates who know you. Yep. Yep. Just before Delia, if you, I don't know if you can find out. I guess you could because you seem like an expert. But if you can find out who the imposter is, then what happens to that person? So there are avenues in law that allow you to well, pursue an imposter who has taken your information and used it for criminal intention. Uh, one of the recent ones is the 2010 Cyber Crimes Act in Jamaica, which it doesn't mention identity theft specifically, but it certainly covers the type of, re of recourse that you would like to exercise against someone who is impersonating you online. So any criminal action in the digital space is covered by the Cyber Crimes Act, and it, it can lead to criminal sanction against an individual, especially if the person is Jamaican, who has stolen your information, placed it on their own profile, and used it to run a scam or some other fraud. Uh, mm. Is there something that I can do to protect the image from being used without permission? There are a few things that you can do. Uh, one of the, the easiest to grasp is following the privacy protocols on the social media platform strictly. Mm -hmm. So it, it is 
easy to appreciate that public profiles are more vulnerable than private ones. It's easier to access the personal information shared by the user. Mm -hmm. You can also regulate the information that you put on those platforms in a controlled manner. So you're deliberately not sharing your date of birth, your address, your place of work, any information that can be used to readily identify you. You can say, I will share photos of me on the beach, but I won't put a location pin, and so on. So it's really a manner of managing your own output to, in a manner that protects you best. Yeah. Yep. Going back to the question I asked earlier, and you said if they use it for criminal intent, uh, well, what if they just have a fake page? I don't know if they're using it for criminal intent. I don't know. Right. But you can't do anything about that? Well, you can, uh, simply. And this, this goes to a deeper issue, and it's really about your ownership of your own image and your own likeness. The reality is it's yours. And you know the courts have spoken about this. It came up in the NIDS case before Justice Batts a few years ago, mm -hmm. where he said in very clear terms, your name, your image, your likeness, your fingerprint, your blood, and all these other personal identifying characteristics are yours and cannot be taken without your consent, mm -hmm. whether it's for nefarious means or otherwise. Period. Mm -hmm. Even if it's the government of Jamaica trying to get this personal information for the NIDS program, it cannot be taken without your consent and it's unconstitutional if they do. Mm -hmm. So the reality is if you can establish that someone is doing so, whether it's simply your face and your name, and you write to the entity that's enabling it, like the social media platform, there is an obligation on their part to remove it. You spoke about profile verification. Um, how does that work now? Because I'm think, with all that's happening on Twitter, there was a time when you, you could pay <laughs> to get their blue yes. tick. So I could just say, I'm never bell and pay and get a blue tick to verify me. Yes. <laughs> so is it still valid, therefore, as a means of saying, well, this says definitely this is who I am, um, is it still valid? Yes. Uh, well, I, I was aware that with uh, Elon Musk's purchase of Twitter, yeah. he did introduce that $8 fee for mm -hmm. purchasing verification blue ticks. Yeah. And at that time, the same concern arose. Mm -hmm. And what the platform managers decided was that for prominent individuals, they would add a secondary level of verification. So in addition to the purchased blue tick, that no longer was a verification of identity. It was an indication that a real person own this and not okay. a bot, not oh. a robot. Oh. Presumably, only real people will pay the fee to have a blue tick attached to their profile. And then they would add another indicator. Uh, and if you visit Elon Musk's Twitter account, you will see it. It says associated with Twitter in a formal way under his blue tick. So there are other indicators for prominent individuals to verify their identities. Who they, that they say who they are. Okay. Yes. Jonathan, just recap in a sense of telling people what they can do. I mean, I, I don't know if there's a foolproof Definitely. <laughs> in anything in life, but just kind of recap how they can stay away from this. And no problem. So, of course, there are preventative measures and there are reactionary measures. On the preventative side, manage your own information and your profiles very carefully. Uh, control the privacy settings to ensure that you do not have a public profile if you're concerned of, about this. Do not put information that can lead to your identification in greater detail than is necessary. Mm -hmm. Don't give location information on posts. Do not give address information. Don't state your place of work. Don't state your date of birth. These are things that you don't have to set out on a social media page, and it protects you if you don't. And then on the reactionary side, if someone is using your information in an unlawful manner or in a way you don't wish, you can record any instances of those violations, report it to the social media pages, and consult an attorney to see if it violates the Cyber Crimes Act. Fantastic. Who, who have the, the better carnival? Trinidad and Tobago. I have to say Trinidad. I mean, <laughs> I've been here for 10 years. I love Jamaica with all my heart, but Trinidad still edges out in that category. <laughs> Good to see you, my friend. Absolutely. Yeah, blessings my pleasure. Love. Yeah. Partner at Don Cox, uh, Jonathan Morgan. All right, still with us. We'll be back after this break with the president of the UNIA, Mr. Stephen Golden. Soon come. Make sense, not